Welcome to another GNU plot tutorial where we're going to explore how to put plots into LaTeX documents and give all the labels and descriptions this distinct LaTeX look. In previous videos I covered how to output your plots as PNG files, which is quick and easy and great for homework assignments, lab reports, those things. But if you're going for a professional looking paper, and in that case you're most likely using LaTeX already, and if not I strongly encourage you to learn it, there are two main issues with a PNG output. First, the PNG images consist of pixels with a finite resolution. If you zoom in enough or you print it out in high resolution, your plot might appear pixelated. And the other problem is that the default GNUplot font doesn't match the default LaTeX font, which makes all the symbols look slightly different, which we're also going to fix in this video. And the way we do this is by using a new terminal called EPS LaTeX. But before I show you how to do that, I need to set up my plot. And I've decided to plot the dispersion relation of a monoatomic chain for this. So first thing I do is I set y0 axis line type minus 1. So that just displays the y axis and line type minus 1 is just a black line. Next are the x and y ticks. So I'm writing set x ticks. And a link to the video where this is explained in detail. So I assume that you already watched this and are familiar with the commands that I'm using. The x ticks command is used to give labels to certain values on the x axis. And you do this by these quotation marks. And what's different now is that we're also going to put the label inside dollar signs which you might recognize from LaTeX means that we're entering math mode. And now we can write expressions like we were in LaTeX math mode. So I'm going to write a minus sign and then I'm going to write two backslashes followed by the command pi. So usually that's just backslash pi in normal LaTeX. Here in the GNUplot environment, we need to put two escape characters, two backslashes instead. Everything else is just the same. You can write any symbol that you want. Just put two backslashes instead of one. And then we're going to divide this by A. And that's going to be our first label. So I write the dollar sign, quotation marks to close the label off. And the point we're labeling is going to be the point minus pi. Then we are going to label the point zero, which is quite simple. And then we're going to label in the same fashion with the label pi over a the point pi. And that's it for the x ticks. Now for the y ticks, we are going to put two omega sub zero. for the point y equals 2, and that's it. Now, of course, we also need to label our axis, so we can write set x label, and our x coordinate in this case is just a wave number, so that's just dollar $k, dollar. and our y label is going to be omega of k. Now I'm also going to unset the key and set the samples to a high enough number so that the plot doesn't appear blocky. And I'm also going to set the x range from minus pi to pi. And now we can plot our graph. So what I'm plotting again is the dispersion relation of a monoatomic chain, also referred to as phonon dispersion relation. And the formula for that is just two times the absolute of the sine of x over two, which we now see plotted in the default Windows terminal. And you see that this terminal did not recognize the dollar signs and the, the LaTeX commands. So it just ignored the escape characters. It just wrote out omega and pi and it left the dollar signs. But this is just to get a rough idea if the plot looks how you want it to look. And if we're now inputting this into the EPS LaTeX terminal, all these labels are going to appear in LaTeX style. So if you're happy with your plot, except for the labels, of course, you close
close this window and you set terminal EPS LaTeX. Now, as with every terminal, there are a few customization options. One I would like to mention at this point is uh, the keywords color and color text. So if you have colored labels or colored text in your plot, you need to include these keywords so that it actually appears to be colored in your final plot. If it's just your actual plot that's colored, that doesn't matter. But there's no harm in writing these keywords out. And now we're going to set our output to this dot tech. So that file ending tex refers to a LaTeX document. And we're going to see later that this actually is a LaTeX document. So I'm going to set the output and then you can just hit replot and it generates not one, but two files in a working directory. As you can see, there are two new files here, the disp.tech file that I actually set the output to and the disp.eps file that was created as well. So the EPS file contains the actual plot, just the, the lines and graphs, while the disp.tech file contains everything else, all the labels and all the text that's surrounding the actual plot. One last thing I need to do is set the output to something else. I can just write set output and leave the argument blank so that it actually closes the files so that the files are not complete and are free to be used within your LaTeX editor. Now my LaTeX editor of choice is Overleaf. So I'm just going to create a quick little document in Overleaf and upload the newly created files. So this is the little document that I created. There's nothing important, nothing fancy going on. It's just a title page, a section heading, and then I created a figure environment just by the begin figure command, then centering to put it in the center. I wrote down a caption for the image and it's closed off by the end figure command. And this is where we're going to put our actual plot. I also uploaded the two files, the disp.tech and disp.eps, and we can have a look at the disp.tech real quick. There's a lot of code in here that is absolutely essential for the plot, but we, that we actually do not really care about. What we care about is the section enclosed between begin picture and end picture. Because as you can see, that's where all our labels are generated. For instance, here, there is the label two omega sub zero and the coordinates where it's placed and the text of the label. Now, if you want to change something, if you made a mistake with one of the labels and you say, oh, that's not actually two omega zero, that's just omega zero, you can just alter the label right here. And you do not need to go into GNUplot and create these files again. You can just alter the files in your LaTeX editor. And you can also see the command where the actual plot, the actual graphic part of the plot is included. It's right here to include graphics command and this just refers to disp.eps. And the way we're going to include this into our main tech document is just by the command input followed by the name of the tech document. So that's disp.tech in our case. And then we can compile it. And we see that the plot is now included in the LaTeX document and that all the labels appear in this distinct LaTeX style as if we had written them out in LaTeX math mode. Now that plot is huge on this page and that might be what you're going for, but that also might not be what you're going for. You might want this plot to be a little smaller. There are actually a few approaches that you could take to fix this. One would be to place this whole input command inside a scale box command. So that's just backslash scale box, then some ratio, for instance, 0.5, and then put the whole input command in brackets. And if we recompile this, you see that it rescales the whole image to half the size. The problem here is that all the labels get rescaled as well. And now you can't read them anymore. There is actually a workaround to that. You, we can go into the disp.tech uh, file and alter the sizes of the labels. Let's go to the omega of k uh, label, which is here, and 
right backslash huge in front of it. And it's important that you write this in front of the first dollar sign and this is going to scale up the label. You can also move these labels around. You can see that they're actually placed on the page with this put command which accepts coordinates. So instead of 2761 for the y coordinate, why not go for 2261? And as you can see, that moves the label downwards because the y coordinate is counted upwards from the bottom left corner. So you can play around with this and scale up your labels, move them around, but that's actually very cumbersome. And the way to avoid this is just change the size of the plot within GNUplot when setting up the terminal. So we're moving back to GNUplot and we're going to type set terminal EPS LaTeX and now we are going to specify the size. So that's usually specified in inches. You can also choose centimeters Then you need to write the unit. So ZM uh, after the numbers. Um, the default option here is 5 3.5. So if I type this, this won't change anything. But I can, for instance, type 3.52. And that's going to limit the size of the whole plot to 3.5 by 2 inches. Now I'm just going to set the output to this dot tag once more, replot, and set the output to something else so that the file is closed off and we're free to upload it. And then I'm going to upload this new file to Overleaf. So I've actually replaced the two files. I haven't recompiled it yet. And if I hit recompile now with the new files, uh, you'll see that it's still incredibly small, which got me for a moment here, but I still have the scale box uh, command active. So I'm going to remove that. So we have a smaller plot from the beginning now, so we don't need to scale it down. And if I now recompile it, we see that the actual plot is a little smaller than it was before, but the labels are actually the same size because it just limits the size of the total plot uh, to the size you specified, so 3.5 by 2 inches in our case, and it does that by shrinking the actual graphic part of the plot, but it doesn't shrink the labels. And if you don't like the positioning of the labels, again, you can just go into the disk.tag file and change these coordinates around. So I think that's all you need to create plots for your LaTeX documents. Have fun, thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.